So now that we've seen how it works when we have a polynomial divided by a polynomial, we want to kick it up a notch and look at well, how to deal with it when we have the end behavior of a function that is a, it's a fraction, but it's not rational. Rational technically is a polynomial divided by a polynomial, and this doesn't have that. Okay, so a couple things. I'm going to use a little bit of algebra here. I'm going to kind of make a little trick of this. But before I get into it, I need to remind us all of something in algebra class that we've learned and probably forgotten about. So this is going to be a very important note for us. So I'll make a little note over here. And that is that the square root of x squared, when you're in algebra class, a lot of times they'll just say, oh, that's x. But it's not quite x. So it's actually the absolute value of x. So for example, let's say I took 2 and I squared it. That would get me 4, and then the square root of 4 is 2. No problems. But what if 2 was negative? What if it was negative 2? When you take negative 2 and you square it, you've turned it into 4. So the square root of this is not x, it's the absolute value of x. It's always turning it positive. But x is defined in two ways. We define it if um, as x if x is greater than or equal to 0, this is the absolute value of x, and negative x if x is less than 0. So let me just draw you a little graph here. Right? This is what x looks like right, as a function, which means the absolute value of x. And the square root of x squared is the same thing. So it's saying, okay, if it was negative right over here, right, negative would become squared, turn it positive, and then you take the square root of it and it gets you negative negative x. Right? So negative negative 4 makes positive 4. Negative negative 2 makes positive 2. So let me give you an example here. If it was negative 2 here, then when I take it and I square it, negative 2 quantity squared, that's the square root of 4, that's 2. I took something that was negative and I turned it positive. And the way to do that is to take your negative value and make a negative in front of it. Negative negative 2 makes positive 2. If it's already positive, like 3, then it's no problem because the square root of 3 squared is the square root of 9, which is 3. Right? So the top part everybody remembers, but the bottom part people forget because it's just convenient not to worry about it. And there's nothing special about x squared for this, actually. It works for any even root. So, for example, um, let me take the, um, let me write it also, um, the square root of x to the sixth would be the absolute value of x cubed, right? Which would be x cubed if x was greater than or equal to zero, but it would be negative x cubed if x was less than 0 by the same logic. And you could keep going and going and going like this. So I'm just going to put etc. So this is a huge note to keep in mind. You're going to use it several times. It's an algebra fact that we kind of ignore in algebra class a lot because, well, let's face it, in algebra we're dealing with a lot of positives everywhere. But for us, it's going to matter. All right, now why is it going to matter? Well, I'm about to show you. So if you look at this, you can't use quite, I mean, we can, but we can't, the trick that we were using before. So before we would say, oh, take this and multiply by 1 over the highest degree in the denominator. Okay, I mean, we can do that still, and we're going to. But the problem is that, well, we're in a little bit of a pickle. Because you're multiplying, or dividing, if you want to think of it that way, you're dividing by the degree of the denominator. Well, it's the largest degree in the denominator, right? So you have a one degree and a zero degree. So one is bigger. So largest degree of denominator. Okay, so for the denominator, that's not going to be a problem, right? 2x plus 1 times this, we were just doing that two pages ago, no problem. But for the numerator, we're going to have problems because this is a radical symbol. So that's a square root, and you cannot mess with a square root with something that's not in a square root. They don't jive well. So we actually need to change this 1 over x depending on our context. So this part is going to actually be modified. So we're going to change this using this little trick over here. So if it's x, I could say, well, that could be 1 over the square root of x squared, right? 
but knowing that that would be 1 over x, or it could be 1 over negative x, depending on which way I'm going to go. Sneaky, huh? So what we're really doing is kind of multiplying by, let me write it this way, we're multiplying by 1 over the square root of x squared. Hmm. Now you're thinking, why are they the same? Ah, because the square root of x squared is x, as long as x is greater than 0, which it would be on one of them. All right, let's do it. So just here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the limit as x goes to infinity. So we're going to do the positive infinity side first. Oops, sorry, that's a little off screen. Let me nudge that over just a touch. OK. OK, so I'm going to take the limit of and then I'm going to rewrite this. Let me write it this way. The square root of x squared plus 1 divided by the square root of x squared, right, all over, and then it's 2x plus 1 divided by x. They're the same thing. So this is OK, because this is 1, right? 1 over the square root of x squared, 1 over the square root of x squared is 1 over x divided by 1 over x. So this is going to work. All right, on this side, that gives me the limit as x goes to infinity. OK, on this side of the denominator part, right, below the big division bar in the middle, there it is, that's just going to get me 2 plus 1 over x, which, let's face it, you probably didn't even need to show that work. I mean, that's obvious. But the numerator, not so obvious. Because what you want to do is you want to take the square root of x squared divided by x squared and 1 divided by x squared. You're combining these together because they're both under a radical sign. You can do it. If they weren't under a radical sign, like the original 1 over x, you'd be in trouble. So you modified 1 over x to something that was convenient, that it had a radical sign in it, the same radical that we've got, and then we're using that radical sign and combining these together, x squared over x squared and 1 over x squared, like this. All right, well, how did that help? It gives me the limit as x goes to infinity of the square root of 1 plus 1 over x squared over 2 plus 1 over x. Oh, but let's think about this. I'm letting x go to infinity, right? So if x goes to infinity, doesn't that go to 0? And doesn't that go to 0? Because 1 over infinity is 0. Hmm. So that means that I have the square root of 1 left in the top, because 1 plus 0, like that, over 2 plus 0, which is 1 over 2. So my horizontal asymptote on this side is y equals a half. All right, now what about the other side? Okay, so we're going to use the same trick, but it's going to be slightly modified. So let's go for the negative infinity side. Okay, so I'm going to take the limit as x goes to infinity and it's going to be 2x plus 1. I'm just going to rewrite the problem real quick, just to give myself some space to work here. OK, but now I'm going to multiply by 1 over, or the square root of 1 over x squared. <sighs> but it's special one. See, the thing is that, oh, sorry, this is negative infinity, sorry. So I'm looking at x going to negative infinity. So I'm only considering negative values for x. Hmm. But when x is negative, you see where we're going with this, right? This is going to be negative x, right? So the square root of x squared is actually negative when x is less than 0, which it will be because I'm trying to find the limit as x goes to negative infinity. So when I multiply by 1 over the square root of x squared, because x is negative, that denominator x is negative is right here, right? So I need to multiply by 1 over negative x. So let me, let me put it this way. This is the positive infinity side, 
and this is the negative infinity side. So up here, when it was positive, 1 over squared of x squared is the same as 1 over x. 1 over x is why the denominator is 1 over x right there. No problem. But now that I'm on the negative infinity side, 1 over the square root of x squared is going to be divide, oops, sorry, multiplied by 1 over negative x. These are the same because I'm looking at x going to negative infinity. This square root of x squared is a negative number. Or let me put it this way, x is negative, right? So it's going to turn it positive, So, but x is only a negative number. So let me, let me give you an example. Let's say x was negative 5, right? Negative 5. So this would be 1 over the square root of negative 5 squared. It would be 1 over the square root of 25, positive right? But I need to be able to put in the number negative 5 and get a positive, otherwise I'm not multiplying by 1. So to keep it so that they're all the same, I've got to put a negative in front of it. Negative, negative 5 will get me 1 over positive 5, right? And this is because we're letting x go to negative infinity. Because x is negative, this is the one we use. All right, so that means that I'm taking the limit as x goes to negative infinity of the square root of x squared plus 1. Oh, I'll separate it off like I did in the last one. One second. I actually used two little square roots in the, in the upper part. It's correct the way I was doing it, but just to keep you guys, you know, sane, I'll put it over that. And then 2x plus 1 but over negative x because x is going to negative infinity. So x is automatically a negative number. All right, so then that gets me, let's see, the limit as x goes to negative infinity of, okay, this will be the square root of x squared over x squared plus 1 over x squared divided by, and then this will be, negative 2, because the x's will cancel, but you get 2 over negative 1. So negative 2 minus 1 over x. That would be the limit as x goes to negative infinity of the square root of 1 plus 1 over x squared, because x squared over x squared makes 1, over negative 2 minus 1 over x. Okay, but as x goes to infinity, this, or negative infinity, this goes to 0 and this goes to 0. So that means that I have the square root of 1 plus 0 over negative 2 minus 0, which would be 1 divided by negative 2. So my horizontal asymptote on this side is y equals negative a half. Sneaky, huh? Now, if you don't believe me, I'm going to graph this. Oh, real quick, I forgot to mention um, the vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptote is very easy on this particular one. We've actually already done one. I think we might have even done this one. So 2x plus 1 equals 0 means x equals negative a half. There's your vertical asymptote. No problem. All right, now I'm going to graph this in Desmos so you can see it. So check it out. Here it is in Desmos. The square root of x squared plus 1 over 2x plus 1. And you can see that I'm absolutely correct. There's negative a half right there, the vertical asymptote, no problem. And there's two different asymptotes. It's going to positive a half over here on the right. right? It's getting closer and closer to a half. If I zoom out, you can see it. And then over on the left, it's going to negative a half, right? getting closer and closer and closer to it as we go. So it actually has two separate asymptotes. And the reason that happened, again, is because of this little trick right here, this little note right there, that if it's on the positive side, the square root of x squared is positive x. But if it's on the negative side, then the square root of x squared is negative x. And that little trick will cause um, square roots of squares like this to end up being opposite um, different numbers, right, whether you're going to the positive or negative side. So I'm going to real quickly draw a sketch of that graph right here on the paper and label my asymptotes and everything. 
There we go. So you can see that over on this side I had negative half, but over on this side I have positive half. So I would just highlight those in my notes. So, And again, this trick is super common to use um, in calculus, but it wasn't so common to use in algebra. They just kind of assume that you know it from algebra, which um, I find a lot of students don't know it. But there you go.